Today on the AI Breakdown Brief, ChatGPT gets shared links, a brain implant helps a paralyzed man walk for the first time in 12 years, and a new statement from AI leaders asking the world to recognize the risks. What's going on, guys? This is the AI Breakdown Brief, all the AI headline news you need in five minutes or less. We start today with a feature that on the one hand adds a huge amount of utility to ChatGPT, and on the other hand, the fact that it didn't exist before shows just how nascent ChatGPT's UI is. The TLDR is that ChatGPT now allows you to share links out from your conversations. So instead of just having to screenshot that particularly interesting or revelatory or brilliant conversation, you can actually get a direct link to it that can be shared with friends, colleagues, collaborators, etc. Currently, this is only available for web, and it's not available for everyone, and it's not available on the iOS app. They say, however, that that will change soon. You can also share it with your name, or you can make it anonymous. For those of you who use Google Docs, the default setting is anyone with a link can view this. Importantly, the link will also not update after it's shared, so it's really a snapshot of a moment in time rather than a living document that evolves as you interact with ChatGPT further around the same question. Lastly, shared ChatGPT links will not show up in public search results. So as I said at the beginning, it's obviously a very useful feature, but again, just remarkable how nascent this UI is, given that this most simple of functionality wasn't there until seven months into the service. Staying on the ChatGPT thread, this one got a lot of attention towards the very end of last week. A New York lawyer named Stephen Schwartz, who has been practicing law for 30 years, has thrown himself at the mercy of the courts after it was revealed that basically all of the previous case material that he cited in a client's lawsuit was fake. Yes, if you thought it was just students who were reporting hallucinated chat GPT information without double checking it, you would be very, very wrong. Schwartzman was representing a client who was suing Avianca Airlines for injuries sustained in 2019 while on a flight. After Avianca asked the judge to toss out the case, Schwartz submitted a 10-page brief that cited more than a half dozen relevant court decisions. Martinez v. Delta Air, Zickerman v. Korean Airlines, and of course, Varghese v. China Southern. The problem was that these were all invented. Mr. Schwartz now says that he, quote, greatly regrets relying on ChatGPT and, quote, will never do so in the future without absolute verification of its authenticity. Welcome to the new world of AI weirdness. Next up on the AI Breakdown Brief, some amazing new medical results from Switzerland. Gert Jan Oskoff was in a bicycle accident 12 years ago. He was paralyzed and thought he was never going to be able to walk again. Researchers, however, have used a wireless device to connect Gert Jan's brain to his damaged spinal cord and were able to use AI to decode thoughts and translate them into spinal cord simulation. Using the device and methodology, after 12 years, he was able to take his first steps and walk upstairs. Alex AI Daily writes, this is incredible. This is why I cover AI news, and I couldn't agree more. Now moving to something much lighter, at least on the face of it. NVIDIA's Dr. Jim Fan writes, what if we set GPT-4 free in Minecraft? I'm excited to announce Voyager, the first lifelong learning agent that plays Minecraft purely in context. Voyager continuously improves itself by writing, refining, committing, and retrieving code from a skill library. The results are that Voyager rapidly becomes a seasoned explorer. In Minecraft, it obtains 3.3 times more unique items, travels 2.3 times longer distances, and unlocks key tech tree milestones up to 15.3 times faster than prior methods. So basically what we have here is an AI agent that is specifically designed to play Minecraft, but in so doing as it's learning, it can rewrite its own code from a skills library to improve itself continuously. All of the code is open source so people can dig into the basis of this research and extend it in different ways. Dr. Jim goes on, generally capable autonomous agents are the next frontier of AI. They continuously explore, plan, and develop new skills in open-ended worlds driven by survival and curiosity. Minecraft is by far the best testbed with endless possibilities for agents. Now, on the one hand, this is super interesting, right? It is bringing a different level and type of functionality to autonomous AI agents. This, to many, is one of the major frontiers for the next set of AI developments. At the same time, not everyone is super keen on this. Eliezer Yudkowsky writes, Presented to those of you who thought there was a hard difference between agentic minds and LLMs, where you had to, like, deliberately train it to be an agent or something. A, they're doing it on purpose, of course, and B, they're doing it using an off-the-shelf LLM. Now, speaking of AI risk, there has obviously been a growing conversation about this. You're seeing regulatory discussions pick up. You're seeing former industry mainstays like Jeffrey Hinton leaving their lucrative positions to start warning about these risks. 
And of course, a couple months ago, we had that six month pause proposal where a number of different leaders in the space asked for a pause in training models that were more advanced than OpenAI's GPT-4. Well, now AI leaders are taking a slightly different approach. Instead of racing right towards a specific action, such as a six month pause or anything else that might come after that, a group of leaders have signed an incredibly simple one sentence statement. The statement reads, Mitigating the risk of extinction from AI should be a global priority alongside other societal scale risks, such as pandemics and nuclear war. The signatories for this include the folks who have been sounding the alarm most recently, including Jeffrey Hinton and Yashua Bengio, but it also includes the CEO of Google's DeepMind, the CEO of OpenAI, the CEO of Anthropic, with dozens and dozens of other researchers, industry professionals, and others. Even Grimes, who's just about as enthusiastic as anyone about the potential of AI and our cyborg future, has signed this note. Now, the reason that I think it's interesting is from a strategic perspective, it takes a lot of the parts where you get into disagreement out of the equation. It starts to construct a shared foundation of agreement from which debates can be held more productively. This is actually a classic negotiation technique. When you have two people or two positions that are on opposite sides, you stop debating the positions and instead look at the underlying agreements between the two parties. If these leaders can get the world to agree that there is enough of a risk that it should be a global priority, that's a shared foundation from which potential remediations or approaches or pauses or any other policy strategy might be able to come from. It's a much more incremental and I think in this case smarter approach. Now, there are many who still think this is just about regulatory capture, and my perspective is even if the signatories who have nothing to do with the open AIs and Googles of the world suggest that it's bigger than that, we still have to be careful about whether regulatory capture is the net outcome, even if it's not the intention. But either way, it's an interesting development in the conversation about AI risk. All right, guys, that's it for today's AI Breakdown Brief. If you're enjoying, please like, subscribe, and share, and I will be back soon with the main AI Breakdown.